Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really good match for you. This is actually one that I found on my Discord server. If you're looking for matches, want to battle against me, or just hang out in the community, go ahead and click that link in the description to join. We have a good time. So, as you can tell, I've brought the most powerful underused squad full of randos, and my opponent also has a very scary team, so let's go ahead and get into the match. So, I decided to lead off with my Lycanroc, as they're going to end up leading off with the Ancient-Ass Magneton. And so Lycanroc's here to do two things, he came to chew bubblegum and be a good boy, and I'm all out of bubblegum. So what I'm gonna do here is just go right for the Stealth Rock. I figure if this thing does want to Earth Power turn one, I can get knocked down to my Sash, and then potentially get some Endeavor stuff going, so I'm fine with it. I want to get up my Stealth Rock here, as uh, it is gonna happen, and then Punk Rock House Magneton does in fact go for the Volt Switch. So it doesn't quite knock me down to my Sash. Uh, but now they get a nice little switch in basically for free on whatever they want. So they decide to go into the Gyarados. Now Gyarados, very scary for me. This thing can, you know, start dragon dancing and just overall be a problem. So this thing comes in, it does intimidate me. We will also note it did not take stealth rock damage, so it's wearing some heavy duty boots. He does not have feet or legs, but my man's got boots on and it's kind of good to know. So here's what I'm going to do. I actually decide to switch into the Tinkaton. I'm thinking this thing dragon dances. And then I can go for a Terra Flying, avoid an Earthquake, and then just profit. But, Gyarados is in fact afraid of the Bonk, and they actually end up switching right back into the Sandy Shock. So my guess is they probably expected me to go into Slowbro here, and then now they have a good matchup with the, the Sandy Shocks. But, I found myself in a situation here where I know that I can take an Earth Power pretty nicely. I'm especially defensive, and I can go for a Reflect. Now I'm super afraid of their physical attackers, so I figure a Reflect is going to be pretty nice here. They actually end up getting a critical hit on the Earth Power, and... You hate to see it. I, I'm actually in a weird position here where I couldn't really Terra Flying to avoid that because then they can just go for an electric move. And the hammer's just in a bad spot. But I do get my Reflect up. It's not going to help me against this thing, but other physical attackers. And now I decide it's time to landscape that ass, or at least mow the lawn. I'm going to bring in Rotom Mow here because I know if you Earth Powers, I'm in a good spot. But they actually just end up going for the Stealth Rock instead. So Rock's up on my side. Don't really have anything to do about that. But I do get the lawnmower in for free here. So now I've got a situation where a Leaf Storm actually kills, or I can predict a switch and go for a Volt Switch. I decide to go for the kill, and it turned out to be a horrible ass idea because I, I, I miss, which is so annoying. Missing moves like that is truly, it can swing a game, it really just is unfortunate. So now this thing is allowed to go for a Volt Switch, get saved in the back for later, and now my lawnmower's sitting here with his hand in his pants looking like an idiot. So in comes a Tumbleweed. He's got a stupid ass smile on his face, and boy would I love to mow that shit off, but I don't have anything to do to it. So, I decide instead to switch into the Slitherwing. Now, I'm expecting this thing to probably go for a rapid spin. Uh, that's kind of what these, these little fellas do. They just be spinning around and power whipping. He's, and power whip's not going to do much to me. So, uh, I switch this thing and I do take some stealth rock damage and they do go for the spin there. So, I'm thinking at this point, I know I can take an attack from this thing and a choice banded U-turn does a lot if they stay in. But it's more likely that they switch and then I can get a nice little pivot... Uh, and, and try to get a better matchup here. So, I go for the U-turn, is going to end up switching out the Tumbleweed, and in comes the Gyarados. So, I get a nice little U-turn off on the Gyarados. Unfortunately, this thing comes in, and I'm afraid of his crazy-ass gaping mouth. So, the Intimidate does kind of suck here, reduce a little bit of Choice Banded U-turn damage, but I do get a nice little, little bit of chip on the Gyarados, which is fine. Uh, and now, I get a switch into whatever I want against the Gyarados. So, I'm actually in a pretty decent spot here, and i got to figure out what's most important. So I decide I'm actually going to go into the Lycanroc. I can either... Uh, Accelerock is actually pretty close to being able to knock this thing out. I can potentially get Stealth Rock back up. Uh, but regardless, I have a couple different options here. Now I decide to just go for the Accelerock because Gyarados is kind of a big threat to my team. It's the main reason I wanted that Reflect up earlier. If it's carrying Crunch, it has the coverage against uh, Slowbro and stuff. But uh, as you'll see, Accelerock does in fact not kill, and he's able to knock me out with a Waterfall. But it's honestly fine, because I was able to get that thing into chip range to where now, pretty much anything on my team is able to now knock this thing out. So, I decide to go into Espeon. Now, Choice Specs Espeon is looking like it could potentially be my win condition here. I I'm able to get huge damage on pretty much everything, and I'm super fast. And I got a crazy Y-tail, and I'm here to have a good time. So, I go for the Dazzling Gleam here. There's no easy switch, so Gyarados does have to go down. Now, it is unfortunate I lose Lycanroc, because I didn't get to do uh, what I wanted in terms of setting up Stealth Rock, or being able to Endeavor, things like that. But, now they get a free switch, and they decide to go into Young Luke, Cario. And this is the one thing that kind of stops my Espeon in its track. So, I have to decide what I want to switch into here, and I decide to go into the Bonk. Now, the reason for this is because... 
Uh, if it does decide to Swords Dance, I can try to Encore, and it's not going to... I don't know. I, I just bring this thing in, essentially, because if it dies, I'm fine with that. But it does go for the Swords Dance here, and that is very scary. It may not be scary, because this thing is about a oh, foot and a half tall over there. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to go for an Encore here, but it does, in fact, have the Bullet Punch. And after the Swords Dance, yeah, I just go ahead and die. So... That does kind of suck, but now I get a free switch into whatever I want, and now I basically have to use Paul for all this man is worth. I basically, if it is carrying uh, dark coverage, I'm going to probably be able to take at least one hit and then go for a flamethrower. Uh, so I've kind of been sla saving old Pinky over here for this situation. So I go for the flamethrower. Luckily, I am carrying that fire coverage. Goes for the extreme speed, and Paul basically is like, oh, did that... Did someone touch me? It didn't even hurt at all. I go for the flamethrower, not quite able to knock it out, but I can take another extreme speed. And it looks like this thing not carrying uh, crunch is actually pretty solid. Slowbro's basically been afraid of all Pokemon having dark coverage in this match, but it looks like we're in a pretty good spot here. This man with over here with his fucking all sorts of priority moves does not scare Paul. Paul is not afraid, so I go for the flamethrower. And that does take care of Midget Lucario. So that is amazing. I can also switch out Slowbro now and get some Regenerator. It's looking good potentially against Salamence if that thing's a physical attacker. Uh, but we're just going to have to wait and see. So they get a free switch and decide to go into, of course, the Tumbleweed. Now this thing, of course, scares the shit out of me with the Power Whip and Paul ain't kinky like that. So I decide to switch into the Rotom Mo. Now I know I can take at least one attack from this thing. Then I can easily outspeed with the Choice Scarf and kill it with a Shadow Ball. So that is the plan time to execute. I switch this fella in and he actually does go for the power whip, does not miss like I missed my freaking leaf storm earlier. Uh, it does so much damage but I'm able to at least take one and now Shadow Ball is pretty much uh, gonna seal the deal here unless they decide to switch but nothing you know really wants to come in on a Shadow Ball and then get out sped with the scarf and then take another one so I put my Shadow Lawnmower balls right on his face and down goes the Bramble Gas. Critical hit shouldn't have mattered and I always like to point out hilarious matchups. That was literally just a Tumbleweed versus a Lawnmower, and this is Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen. But now they get a free switch, and this is a Pokemon that I've also been afraid of all match, and that is Low Kicks, in that this thing has extremely scary priority with that first impression. If it's Choice Banded, I'm thinking I can maybe go into Paul and, like, and, and basically just sack this thing off. Uh, and then get a good matchup because it's then forced to switch after going for the first impression. So I bring in Paul here. He's not looking like I'm healthy enough to really take anything. But uh, they do go for the U-turn. It turns out I actually do live it because this thing is actually a defensive fucking beast. And Paul should never be underestimated for real. But the U-turn there, it's actually wildly unfortunate. I kind of sent this thing in just for death fodder to be able to get a matchup. But now I just got to kind of deal with it. And in comes the Salamence. So... Big Fat Lime Dragon is extremely scary for me. However, I've been saving my Choice Specs Espeon in the back. With that Dazzling Gleam, I know it's actually a 70% chance to knock that thing out with the Dazzling Gleam if I don't get any chip on it. So my plan for this is to expect this thing to go for the Dragon Dance here. If it does, I go into Ch uh, Choice Scarf Rotom Mo, who should still be able to outspeed, get enough chip onto this thing to where maybe shit happens. But uh, it turns out it's actually going to end up going for the Hyper Voice. And that is because this thing is running the Throat Spray. So now it activates its Throat Spray item. And it's actually going to get itself a nice little special attack boost. And that is very scary. However, Espeon is still locked and loaded. And basically ready to do what it needs to do. Uh, it's got a high chance to kill with Dazzling Gleam. And I really don't have any other option here. So I'm down to a kitty in a dream. And let's make it happen, boys. So Espeon comes in. I got my hearts flowing. Looking adorable. And all I have to do is just connect with this Dazzling Gleam nice and easy. Uh, and then this thing goes down. So I go for the Dazzling Gleam. And they're going to reveal the Terra. And this is e extremely bad timing. Because Salamence d does reveal that it's actually going to be... Steel Terra. So he puts a fucking axe on his head and now is going to resist the Dazzling Gleam, which is extremely bad for me because now this thing is able to live. I do get a little bit of chip damage, but it does basically nothing compared to what I was expecting. And now I die to a Dragon Pulse. So that was probably the worst timing for a Terra that could have possibly happened for me. And that just reveals how powerful this mechanic can be. You can truly win a match that almost was a loss for you. But the game goes on, and honestly, there was no way for me to really predict that. It was kind of my only play at the time, and so kudos for hitting that Steel Terra at the right time. So now I get to switch into the Slitherwing. Now, what I can try to do here is go for the Terra Bug. First impression should go first and do a bunch of damage, especially with that Terra. I'm, I'm Choice Banded, so it's kind of my only option at this point. And I'm thinking that, hey, maybe there's a chance that this actually knocks it out. So I go for the Bug Terra here for that extra damage. Now, this... 
is a very powerful Slitherwing right here. With this priority move and double stab and a choice ban, I'm thinking maybe there's a chance. I don't know how fat this dragon is. I go for the first impression. It does nearly enough to knock it out. I knock it down to red, which is actually crazy, and then it does have the flamethrower to kill me. So that was kind of my last possible chance uh, to being able to at least take care of the Salamin. So down goes the Slitherwing, and I've been absolutely hoed once again by Salamins. I swear to God, this thing has been an absolute beast since Gen 3, and sometimes there's just nothing you can do, and you just gotta, you just gotta respect that. So that is gonna be the end of the match, as now Slowbro has to just come in and just, uh, you know, suffer his fate. But thank you guys very much for watching. Sometimes the matches don't go in your favor, and that's just the game we play. So I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.